This is the second part of a tutorial looking at the instancing code snippet. In this part I'll explain what the code does and I'll show you how to make an instancing scene of your own. First of all I want to look at some code in the blend for web user manual. In the for application developers section open up application programming and click module system. The code snippets use the register function to make a new module. In this example the new module is called my module. The module definition starts after the opening bracket and finishes before the closing bracket. Usually there will be many functions inside a module but only the functions that are exported are available outside. Once the new module has been registered it can be imported using require and the exported functions can be called. Looking at the JavaScript for the instancing code snippet the register function is used to create a new module called instancing. The module exports one function called init. The module definition starts at this opening bracket and finishes at this closing bracket. And this line combines requiring the instancing module and calling the init function. Next I'm going to look at the draw line function. This is the function where the instancing making copies takes place. The function has six parameters, three numbers for the start point and three numbers for the end point of a line in 3D space. The next line uses the scenes module which has a get object by name function which gets the object whose name is Suzanne which is the monkey head and returns a pointer to it which is stored in a variable called source object. The next three lines calculate the distance between the duplicates so that they are equally spaced along the line. The next line sets up a for loop which runs this block of code multiple times. The number of times the block is run depends on the value of number of points. At the moment it's set to 10 so the loop will be run 10 times. The loop variable i is set to 0 for the first run of the loop. It is incremented each time through the loop so its value varies from 0 to 9. The next line uses another function from the blend for web API this time from the objects module. As the name of the function suggests it makes a copy of the source object the monkey's head and returns a pointer to the copy which is stored in the variable monkey. Each copy is given a name and the name will be Suzanne followed by a number. Because the number is initialized outside of the function and it is incremented each time through the loop all the numbers will be unique the next API function used is append object from the scenes module and it will add the copy to the current scene. The position for the copy along the line is calculated and the API function set translation from the transform module places the copy at the location. Scrolling up, the variable pos is set to 10 and here we have multiple calls to the drawline function with 
the variable pos as a parameter. So start x is minus 10. Start y is minus 10. Start z is minus 10. But end x is plus 10. And the other two values are minus 10. So this draws a line from minus 10 to plus 10 in the x direction. All the z values of the first four lines are negative. So these draw the bottom square of the cube. All the z values of the next four lines are positive. So these draw the top square. To make the pyramid, a pyramid doesn't have a square at the top, so I deleted these four lines. And I made all the side lines end at the same point where x is 0, y is 0, and z is 10. The rest of the script is similar to the script that I looked at before that loaded a 3D scene and enabled the camera controls. These are the blend for web modules that are used and as we have seen functions from these three modules make the copies and place them. The init function configures the app ready to load the scene. The parameter passed to the function is a fairly long list of property names and their values. The first property sets the region in the web page where the scene is going to be loaded. The next property gives the name of the callback function that will be called when all the properties have been set. The initCB callback function loads the 3D scene. First of all it checks that the initialization process completed successfully. If successful, it calls the load subfunction, which uses the load function from the data module to load the 3D scene. It also sets the name of the callback function that is called once the scene has loaded. So once the scene has loaded, the callback function is run, the camera controls are enabled, and the lines of monkey heads are drawn. To change the script so that it loaded my red cube instead of the monkey head scene, I had to change the name of the scene to be loaded and change the name of the object in the scene but for the copying to work, an important change had to be made in Blender. Going back to the user manual, click Objects and Copying Objects Instancing. To copy an object, it must be dynamic. And a quick way of making it dynamic is in the Rendering Properties, tick Force Dynamic Object. This is the red cube file, which I made in a previous tutorial. It is just a red cube with some sky settings. The important setting to change for instancing to work is in the object properties. Scroll down and in rendering properties tick force dynamic. In this version of the file I have moved the camera further back and in the camera's object data properties I have set the clipping distance to end at 150. Remember to re-export the file, file export blend for web json export. Now we can zoom back a reasonable distance before the pyramid is too far from the camera to be rendered, so it is clipped. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. Thanks for watching and goodbye.